What up? Seth Miranda here. This is Adorama Rewind, and thank you guys so much because last week was the highest viewed rewind of all time. I've been doing this for about a year, year and a half or so, and uh, you guys came through on that one, and I'm glad the show is growing, which helps us keep going forward with it and getting more resources for it, obviously. Uh, and it shows how much of a community is out there for this platform. So thank you guys so much. Remember, you guys can talk to each other down in the comments, whatever you guys are talking about. See what other people are saying and respond and share ideas, viewpoints, and have discussions. That's what I'm trying to create here, and I think that's what Adorama does best is create community. Okay, so let's get started because this is going. This first one is probably going to start a lot of conversation. Uh, Gigi Hadid can use a photographer's photo because I smiled. It's true. Down here is the image. She threw it on Instagram, and it is a copyrighted photo, but she's saying because she smiled towards the camera, gestured, kind of posed for it, and because she cropped it for Instagram, she altered it enough and was part of the creation enough to be considered partly an author of it. Whoa. So this means that she took a copyrighted image, put it on Instagram, she's being sued, and she's saying it's fair use. Uh, this, this is a lot to, to digest. It seems like a simple thing, but it's not. First of all, she has 48 million followers on Instagram. She could post anything and it'll fly. I mean, it, it doesn't need to be a photo that she found and threw on her Instagram that someone else shot, plus it's already copyrighted, which is kind of means it's like spoken for already. As being a professional model, you'd think you'd have an understanding more of someone making a living from the creation of content and media imagery. And why would you want to in inhibit somebody from cr making a living or benefiting from their work if you're in that industry yourself? A little crazy, plus, I'm sure she does enough work that's already out there that she can siphon from to put on her Instagram. I, I just don't understand the, um, the ambition to fight back, right? You wanna post it and see if it flies, I kind of understand that. But to go to the defense with it and with such a, a shallow uh, defense, I mean, it seems very uh, desperate to go, I cropped it, therefore it's partly mine. No, it really isn't. That, that photographer was working, they were out there lugging gear, standing around, waiting for moments. They were doing their job and they were trying to earn a living from it. And this argument, if she at all comes on the positive for her side, whether it's in the courts or socially or whatever, could cause a bunch of things. Meaning that any model you work with, because they're modeling their gestures for you and placating to you, they could claim partial author of that image and that could cause a whole thing uh was she hired for the shot no was she in a public place yes is it copyrighted yes so i'm really curious to see where the courts lie on this in an official manner socially i think this is going to play out more in the photographer's favor honestly although this could cause a whole bunch of mid-level models trying to grab at images if this is a just cause right so let me know down below what you think about that it's kind of hectic I don't want to go too crazy with it. I don't like this whole show about that, but whoa, that's, um, that's pretty heavy. Let's go into some gear news really quick just to lighten it up a bit because uh, last week was pretty heavy. Let's stick it with this one. So phase one, which we don't talk about a lot, uh, automated frame averaging with raw output. So phase one, these beautiful, high-end, incredible uh, medium format cameras uh, known more for Capture One probably to civilians because more people have access to the Capture One tethering uh, cataloging software than the hardware of phase one. But these cameras are incredible. I've shot some you know, the highest campaigns you've probably seen out there. What this is basically saying is that it does a multi-shot. So if, if, think of it kind of like HDR and bracketing. It's gonna take multiple shots and use aspects of the exposure in the best possible means. What does that mean? It means you'll get low, less noise, higher dynamic range, more detail. So you'll be actually multiplying the amount of pixels. You'll be lowering the ISO when you can in the areas that it's allowed for and you'll be able to get a range of exposure. So it's kind of like doing all this HDR stuff, but instead of having all these files and putting them together in post or having a JPEG version or a TIFF version of it, it goes onto one raw file. Pretty interesting. It's, to me, it sounds like the start of what could be the future of imaging where our raw files are really just uh, all this latitude to alter it however we need or have all the information we need to create the image we want. But at the point of shot, getting all the information we need. Of course, I'm sure something like this only works for like still life. You're not gonna be shooting uh, freezing action or something with uh, a multiple shot type of interval, but who's to say we can't get there, you know? Uh, I'm pretty curious about that one. 
Let's keep it going with some more gear news for all you Metabones adapter owners. There's a firmware update which kind of supercharges your uh, Metabones adapter for the EF lenses to E Sony mount uh, adaption. So you can take your Canon EF lens to a Sony uh, camera full frame and, and mount it. There were some autofocus issues, especially at high frame rates, like 10 frames per second. Well, they're saying they support AFC up to 10 frames per second with the Sony a7 III. And on top of that, you get increased autofocus speed, but you have improved exposure accuracy and autofocus accuracy. You have fixed issues with Sigma lenses, fixed issues with Tamron lenses. You have fixed IBIS issues. So anything that they've been falling short on, it looks like Metabones got to work and uh, ironed it out with just pure firmware. So if you already own the adapters, uh, go check this out, hit up the link, go get the firmware and supercharge those adapters. Keep in mind that if it's a third party adapter, there's gonna be a fall point somewhere. They do not, uh, they did not make the apparatuses they're trying to adapt to. They're doing the best they can, kind of uh, reverse engineering a little bit and trying to see how they can make it work. They've gotten very close. Autofocus seems to have been one of the fall short points of uh, adapters so, for, so far. And on top of that, uh, it's always been a fall point when it was high frame rates. So 10 frames per second with autofocus on an adaptive lens is pretty great. It's, it's taken a, a while to get there, but we're getting there, right? So if you're in a Metabones adapter uh, owner, congratulations. Uh, here is a story I'm pretty psyched on because I, I, I love these. I love the space shots. So a volcano erupted in Russia and shot from space with a D5 were these images. This is an eight miles off of the Earth's surface explosion from a 2,300 foot wide crater in a Russian volcano. Look at this, amazing. I love this stuff, I don't know why. I'm just always fascinated by it. You can't beat mother nature. Uh, back in 2017, NASA acquired 53 Nikon D5s. Put your head around that math of how much money that was. Uh, and this is just from some of the ones that were fixated to space station. So that's pretty cool. If you're one of those types of people that get psyched off of that uh, type of imagery, uh, hit that link. I definitely love sharing that stuff with you guys. Uh, if you're a product shooter, this one should be pretty cool for you. Photon is making a mini product photo studio with ultra flexible LED lighting. Okay, so you're gonna say, ah, oh, what's the big deal? I've seen stuff like this before. Uh, you kind of haven't. So what's interesting about this is if you see here, see this checkerboard pattern? That means you have 25 tiles per panel that you can activate or deactivate. You can have a whole panel or you can make designs out of it, whatever. You, you wanna make a background out of it or use it for a display purpose, you can. But right here, you can see that you can activate them individually. What does this mean? So let's talk about this. Before you saw these like um, diffusion tents, right? They were a tent that just made a box and then you would have to put lights on the outside. So your footprint for a table would be your item, the box, and then a light behind it. This means that the tent actually lights itself. Uh, it, and you have a ton of control. You can use one panel, three panels, four, whatever you wanna build, you can do. So it's modular and it's up to you how you wanna light it. So that way, it's not just a cookie cutter shot and maybe it only worked well for shooting a model car but didn't work really well for shooting uh, a potted plant you know who knows right uh, but this gives you the chance to actually customize and make the lighting closer to what you want of course you can't do everything in anything i am wondering what the color range index of these cri of the the cri of these leds are because the price point is looking like it's only on kickstarter right now but uh, they're saying that it is $220 contribution gets you a unit. But you can see here, like uh, all these images shot, here's the actual reflection of being used of the, the lighting. And you can use it as just placemats for a display, or you can start separating them and get more breathing room and use the wall as a background as opposed to just like a sweep and all this other stuff. So what is, is this gonna replace jobs? Probably not. Um, People always say that, but this is really good for quick e-commerce, uh, do-it-yourselfers, you know, startup camp, uh, startup uh, companies that want to do campaigns are cheap. You know, you want to complain about day rates. Well, now they're not going to try to get you for a hundred dollar day rate. They'll just do it themselves until they get to a point where they actually need uh, better images or um, or larger scale. Let's say. Don't know anything about this yet. Have not had it in hand. I don't know many people that have, but it's pretty interesting, and I think it's really cool that we've gotten to this point with them. Honestly. 
Uh, something also that's pretty cool is SERP unveiled the Genie Mini 2 pocket size motion controller. This little guy right here, uh, SERP has made some pretty cool stuff, but what's cool about this is that you can actually program a ton of things through your phone uh, as far as like panning points and nine different shots and key points that you want to focus on. And they're actually saying that uh, you, with later firmware updates because of USB-C connection, you'll be able to control the camera ISO exposure and things like that from the Genie, which is kind of pretty cool, which means you can just mount it and work everything from that one app, the camera and the motion of the camera. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, it has Wi-Fi in it and some other imp uh, improvements from the previous, uh, but they've done some pretty cool things. And if you're into shooting video and want to have that next level of gestures and motion to your images, check that one out. Uh, speaking of next level, this one is interesting, but I'm kind of wondering if anybody cares. You tell me. Oppo unveils the world's first underscreen selfie camera. Yeah, so you see this right here? The screen actually goes over the lens of the camera facing you on your phone. What this enables is 100% screen. However, uh, you know, you're gonna be touching that area of the screen, fingerprints getting over the lens. Are you gonna be constantly wiping the screen? Uh, is this much extra screen gonna matter to you? Uh, you know, we people are gonna say like, this has been around, but it really hasn't. What's happened before is that uh, it's been covered by maybe the screen, but the screen was not touchable, was not active, was not able to be controlled or um, interactive, right? Now you actually have an area of the screen that's completely interactive. You have a full screen, it's right there and you can swipe something all the way to that side. It, it's a start, right? Are we gonna see this integrated going forward? Or are we just gonna, is, is the future just a bunch of total full screens and things behind it? I'm kind of curious about that. I don't know how far this is going to go or if anyone's even going to care. So tell me down below. And on that same tick, Apple has filed a patent for an optical sensor in a watch band. So this is pretty much what you're looking at. They're thinking that it's going to be a camera right here and you pull it from your wrist and you're able to twist it and pull it anywhere you want to take a photo. So instead of you pulling out your phone or, or uh, you know, whatever, it's just really quick, pull it up and you use it like kind of a periscope snake head kind of a thing. Uh, kind of cool, I guess. I'm not an Apple Watch guy. You can talk to Daniel Norton about that. Uh, he has one. I, I, I don't know if this is, tell me if you're an Apple Watch uh, owner, if this is something that's appealing to you. I'm sure it, um, there's gonna be some sort of uh, issues with it, right? If it's an ever running sensor because you have to pull it up for it to uh, take a picture. Uh, is it going to drain battery? Does it have to be activated? Is motion going to keep clicking it on and off? Is it, uh, it going to sense light? In, in which case, will it not work in some situations? I don't know. Uh, I just think it's kind of interesting that this is where they're thinking. And it just goes to show you how we just can't get fast enough when it comes to taking images, right? We have to go, 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 go. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. And on that click, uh, there's a new camera app, which is kind of, I don't want to say disturbing, but... Uh, it's kind of funny how we're just, this is a need, right? So this camera app erases humans in every photo. You can see it right here. It's, it's a bit crude. I mean, you know, you can see the sandwich sign behind him is gone. And I, after seeing them side by side, you can kind of tell where this guy was. Uh, of course, you know, it's doing the best it can. So it's called Bye Bye Camera. I think it's about three bucks and it detects humans and then it gets rid of it. And you can see that says down here, Adobe actually had similar technology called monument mode where you could take a picture of like the Eiffel Tower and it'll do its best job to get rid of all the people. Uh, so what are you really shooting there? It's not really a proper representation of what was in front of you. You're just kind of getting something for yourself or a social or to share with friends. I don't, I don't know. Uh, it, it's totally uh, fallible. You'll, I'm sure it'll get tripped up and it's only real positive is that it's super fast and on the spot and you don't have to think about it after the fact. But are we gonna start looking at images of things we shot and have a representation that AI gave us and not have the real reference of what happened at that moment in time? Is that where we're headed? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of crazy to think that we're moving towards uh, the optimizing of false imagery as opposed to referential documentation. Mm, kind of crazy, right? Uh, speaking of false 
Uh, Fujifilm is warning that there's fake Fujifilm out there that can mess up photo labs. So this is the Fujifilm cans that we know and love, and here's the fake version of it. So apparently this hit the market somewhere. It's 35 millimeter, but what it really is is cinema film. And processing that through C41 can cause issues uh, because it's really a different uh, processing altogether and that could wreck the chemistry and wreck roles for the next people who drop off their film, so to speak. So be aware of that, check out that uh, article, uh, see if it's in your region, and um, you know, just be, be uh, aware out there. It's funny, right? We saw counterfeit uh, Sandus cards, and now we're seeing counterfeit film. Like, is, that much, is there that much of a market that we need to uh, counterfeit film? Uh, everyone's telling you, like, film is dying. It's, it's, it, is it? Is it? There's enough of a market to create black market and fake. I don't know. Uh, so in some cool gear news, uh, if you're someone who's a Leica fan but can never afford Leica, uh, they're, they, they're putting out a, a more affordable option for you. So Leica unveils the ME Type 240 entry level. So this is about $3,800, $4,000 camera, 24 megapixel full frame, two gig buffer, ISO 200, 6400. And of course, you get their, um, their Mastro uh, processor and their beautiful uh, sensor and their color, and you get to use Leica glass. So uh, if you've always been someone that was like, oh, Leica, 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 uh, we always looked at that company as aspirational, right? Like once you got a Leica, it was kind of like you were cruising a bit you kind of you kind of made it and people wonder like why is it four grand when my my sony or my nikon can do all this stuff it's like yeah but have you ever shot a leica have you ever seen what you get out of a leica have you ever seen images in real time when they're shot from a leica and go wow like the color space in their glass is beautiful the processing that they're that they have of color is incredible and i mean leica just makes some of those beautiful images that we've seen out there and it's definitely um beyond just a camera it's almost like a collector piece there's people want just the lens cap that has that like a stamped in it because it's an and it's like a hundred dollar lens cap um it, it's another area of photo and it's something that should exist while we have all the really affordable stuff and people can go and shoot all they want you know having the luxury brands is is needed as well you need the light to have the dark ah dark crystal Ooh. uh having said any all that uh, let's look at the advantages of what's going on today. Sony A9 was a great advantage at the Democratic debate. So I'm probably, I'm sure you guys probably saw this all over the internet. The Washington Post actually reported this. So what happened was is that the Democratic debate, all of the time was rushing in. And if you ever watched a press uh, conference here, uh, they were like, no, we can't have that. So you people can only shoot when there's an audience applause and that'll kind of mask the uh, sound of your shutters and all this. Well, one guy, uh, 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 Doug Mills, actually ran into the uh, Democratic debate and he got up to the stage and they tried to stop him and, and they told him why. And he said, no, 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 my camera's silent. He, he showed them how the Sony A9 is just like taking a billion frames a second and he didn't hear anything. And they're like, oh, well, go ahead then. This is awesome. Uh, this is not a commercial for the A9, though. You guys, I, I think that's the issue with the that I've been seeing on all the blogs and forums. Is people are like, oh no, Sony A9 is is for photo. It's it's the fact that it's a silent shutter and it happened to have features that this photographer wanted to use for photojournalism. Any silent shutter camera would have worked in this case, right? So uh, we're getting to that, right? Almost every uh, manufacturer has a full frame mirrorless, and they all have silent shutter. In fact, uh, DSLRs who have a mirror actually have silent uh, shutter as well. Uh, the Nikon D850 has it through live view. So it's doable. It's just he was smart enough to uh, accentuate it to people who didn't know. And now maybe this will start becoming um, a feature that all photojournalists are going to be hunting for in their gear. Uh, going forward into the new years, are we going to see a 1DX Mark II mirrorless that can have this uh, silence going on? Are we going to see a D5 Nikon mirrorless version out there? Are we going to see, uh, you know, a, a lot more, you know, walking away from the mechanical shutter? Personally, I like mechanical shutters. Uh, the rolling shutter is an issue on some cameras. It doesn't allow for uh, better, uh, good shots of action because it's rolling along the sensor. If something is moving, you could have like a wavy arm as it's moving or, you know, egg-shaped wheels on a car if it's driving by. So, the fact that the Sony A9 has no blackout and has close to a global shutter, that its, it's rolling shutter is, is really uh, good. 
uh, it was it enabled him to do that. So. Uh, that's a plus for the A9, definitely. I think as we get closer, the new shift will be not the size of the shutter, but the, the size of the sensor, but the fact that we can get closer to a global shutter would be uh, monumental. Uh, th there are global shutter cameras out there, but not uh, like a full frame you hold in your hand that's like affordable and a system. So we'll keep an eye on what's going on out there in that world. Uh, and I'm just going to keep it there as far as the news. And I just wanted to go into last week's comments. We talked about a model who was burned on site uh, during a photo shoot when a photographer sprayed some paraffin wax to create a fire effect and had no insurance, no paramedics, no uh, FD uh, there, nobody except him and the model. And she unfortunately caught fire and burned. Well, Robin Lee, the uh, model herself, actually wrote on the video, thank you so much, Seth, for sharing my story to help her raise awareness and for donating. I truly appreciate it so much. And you can see down there, as a retired Florida firefighter paramedic, he was supposed to notify the fire department he was working with combustible materials he should have professional insurance that should cover the poor models burns too put it bluntly he's rude says hog 427 um this sparked a ton of not debate but discussion and that's what i'm hoping to do here i don't want to have people fighting each other over what they feel is right or validating things they have bought and choices they've made but instead while this model is burned like 50 percent of her body whatever that is she was completely destroyed if you don't know what i'm talking about check out last week's rewind something good does come out of it we have younger photographers out there that are picking up gear that has more ability and and power in their hands than ever before and they're trying to expand it with concepts now you can't just go run into the street and do dangerous stuff and shoot it and get lucky that no one got hurt and keep doing it we now start a discussion about proper procedure and protocol when working as a professional. When you do a shoot, you're responsible for everybody's well-being. People come to your set, they leave just like they came. Physical, mental, everything, okay? You are responsible for everyone that's involved in your work or your shoot or on your set. And unfortunately, this uh, model took uh, took the sharp end of the... Uh, took, took the took the brunt of the storm there. Uh, unfortunately, she's burned, but maybe going forward, uh, having this awareness out there, maybe a young kid who just spent a grand on a camera isn't gonna go light a sofa on fire and have someone sit on the other end of it trying to get a cool photo, you know? Or, or throwing chalk into the air and blinding people or whatever, or, or lighting uh, steel wool on fire and spinning it around and causing sparks everywhere. That stuff's dangerous, kids. And I'm glad that we started this discussion and, uh, and Please know that you can always reach out to our social platforms for advice on how to do proper uh, procedures, safety. Uh, you know, DM us on Instagram at Adorama. Write us in the comments on Adorama TV right here. Tweet at us at Adorama. You know, we're around and I try to keep us as a resource if we can. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for being a communal. And having said that, I also want to remind you that we're not just in the photo video space. You guys can come out to Adorama XP on Twitch. Every Sunday, me and Josh Soleil are talking games and speaking about philosophical things in the, the community and playing some awesome games on some rad gear. So if you haven't and you're a gamer and you're out there, there's a community for you here as well. Go to twitch.tv slash Adorama XP and come join us every Sunday, 12 to 3 Eastern Standard Time. We're here and we have takeovers from players from all over during the week uh, and I'm adding to that roster as we go along there are going to be more giveaways so you guys can pick up some more hardware and stuff for your PCs and whatever else you need uh, if you just join us in the chat and we throw some trivia at you and you can win a gift card and stuff like that so uh, having said all that this was a lot I am <sighs> but I appreciate all you guys tuning in all the time and last week really showed how much farther we can go with this show. Uh, thank you so much for all the views. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the shares. And really, take a look at those comments from all the rewinds and start talking because you never know who you're going to meet out there. And then next thing you know, you go to a trade show and you're actually real life people. Who knows, right? Okay, guys, uh, for the question of the week, is there, since we've been talking so much about technology and advancements and what's happening in our gear, is there something you're still waiting for? Is there some feature you still need out there? Is there some uh, fall point on equipment that's happening out there that's been hindering you? Or is there something that you think is just theoretical and will never happen? Tell me what you're waiting for as far as advancement in equipment, 
in the photo, video, audio world. I would love to hear it. And the more we talk about it, the more the brands hear it, the more they start working on it, the more it becomes a reality. Whoa, we have the power, kids. All right, I'm out of here. Hit like, write me down in the comments. I'll see you down there. See you next time. Peace.